Have you ever heard the word microcosm? So, well, wait, break the word apart. Sometimes it's hard to tell where uh, my English language and culture end and where my own thinking begins. If you break a word that you don't know apart, microcosm, in this case, micro meaning small and cosm, cosmos, meaning universe or everything that is. Those two words derive from Greek, I think, like a lot of our language does, or Latin, which is just kind of Greek, absorbed and modified. Well, anyway, look at this microcosm of our world, or microcosm of the universe, if you want to take the metaphor that far. It's, my goodness, a couple years old now. I wrote about it in one of the videos, but I wanted to update what it looks like at the moment. Why is this a good metaphor for life on Earth? Well, for one, it's well, a metaphor for life in my house. Look how inhospitable it is out there. So I'm kind of bottled in and I can't go beyond my firmament. At least, it's not that there isn't anything outside of that, it's that nothing outside of that really applies to the comfortable life that resides inside. Well, lesson be learned, and I don't know how this really applies to the metaphor, but this closed system is not entirely closed. It requires some periodic help from the outside world, from beyond the firmament. Uh, you can see some organisms that are not ferns kind of take over after a while. So I've cleaned it maybe twice now to pretty good success. And it's had some explosive growth where there were periods where ferns were just pressed up against it and even grew all the way out a good couple, two inches. But I need to clean this. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to give it a little more food because there's been a lot of biomass that has grown and been removed during the wiping processes. If life here has taught me anything about ferns, it's that they really love to eat rotten logs. So we'll head out beyond the bottle and I'll find an old rotten log that I can just scrape a spoonful or two of nutrition to give to this. And then I'll wipe the inside walls with some cotton and hopefully we can get this back to looking like something a little less like something you find in a creek bed. Out in the next bottle, up. The bottles go up and down. The next bottle up would be uh, the woods surrounding my house. Remember in one of the later episodes of Cosmos, Sagan gets kind of philosophical towards the end and he speculates that in every atom there could be an entire universe that we don't see. I'll return to that point. We spent the weekend, well, we spent a Sunday cleaning out this area. There was some brush in it. You can see some of the brush back there. And so we burned a bunch there and there's a pile of what was left of a few fallen pine trees but in the process there are low points pits and we make them into breakdown pits so I threw a bunch of rotten wood in there and then covered it with leaves and sticks there's some good fern food in there to see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. A robin redbreast in a cage puts all of heaven in a rage. The bottles don't just go up. They go down. <laughs> I mean, well, if you start with an organism, like you or I, 
the next bottle down is that we have organs. And then under those, those organs are composed of tissues and the tissues are composed of cells, cells of organelles and organelles of proteins, the proteins of amino acids, amino acids of atoms, and so on. Down it goes. It's bottles all the way down. <laughs> essence of the forest and I must say it has a strikingly fresh smell this is our missing ingredient Wow, it has an incredibly earthy smell. And I've probably had worse soups. The boiling was for insects, at least as much as it was for bacteria. There is a, a sort of biome that this plant is accustomed to, this fern. So we don't want to alter that too dramatically. So I don't want to introduce too much weird bacteria from those broken down logs. There we go. I'm getting there. At least now I can see inside of it. The fern has established a network in there, but it's being choked out. We have to get it some light. Let me try to explain my technique here. I'm kind of pushing forward and then patting down a little bit, ever so gently. So I'm kind of pressing the fern out of the way. I'm only interested in removing whatever's growing on the glass. I've removed quite a bit of this green organism from the glass, but that also means that I've lost some nutrients. Are you concerned for the fern's health? Don't be. It will spring back just fine. 
probably faster than ever now that it can get sunlight. I'm really not quite sure how to categorize this video. Definitely its own genre. <laughs> Black walnut. No sanding this time. We'll just leave it rough. And with that, we've prolonged the inevitable. It's time to regrow. But of course, it's a living piece, so it's subject to change. I found it. Marcus Aurelius, Book 4. Listen. The knowledge that there is nothing nature loves more than to alter what exists and make new things like it. All that exists is the seed of what will emerge from it. I don't really have anything else left to say, except that I enjoy your company in a bizarre way. Uh, but the interesting part was at the beginning, in my opinion. So I will see you on the next subject, whatever that may be. Of course the earth isn't in the shape of a bottle. That would be ridiculous. This is just a metaphor for any environment that you might find yourself in. But there is a way to tell what shape the earth actually has. You can watch as a ship sails off into the sunset. In this case, it's a schooner filled with men of fortune. As it moves away, you can watch as its hull slowly disappears before its mast does. Clear evidence for the particular shape of the earth. It seems that our ship in the bottle rests on the back of the great turtle. Japanese scientists explaced it. It's turtles all the way down. Be careful how you interpret evidence. <laughs>